we're recording. And then I will go ahead and go. Does it tell you also when we go? It says when you're recording, yeah. Does it say when we're what do I live? Say? live? Yeah. I don't remember. Alrighty, friends, as far as it looks on my side, we are live on Facebook. So hello, good morning, happy Thursday. Um, we are, I'm Kelly, and we have Sharice and Lorene here, and we are really excited to have mentors on. Um, but I'll say always that Sharice, one of my favorite people to work with and have been yogaing with for a long time now, but now we're doing some other stuff too. We're doing, you know, we're talking with our mentor and we're doing all this different things. So I'm really happy that we are reconnecting and that we're here. Yeah, same. And um, this is Laureen and she, Laureen Hayden. She is my mentor and actually a mentor to many. <laughs> and Laureen is a Ayurvedic pr practitioner. She's a yoga teacher and a yoga therapist, which is so amazing and much needed in these these days, but I mean, every day. Um, and like I said, you're my mentor. And my favorite fun fact about you is that you used to sell art in a gallery. And I think that it's just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> also perfect for our relationship. <laughs> that is super yes. cool. Yeah, it was a really wonderful uh, part of my life for a long time. And in a lot of ways still is, but just professionally, um, being able to work with artists and the main thing for me in that profession was um, rather than seeing it as a sales job, it was really more about helping people connect and helping to complete the communication between artist and viewer and really giving people permission to do what they really wanted to do anyway, which is buy the piece and take it home. So it was a really fun job. Very gratifying. Well, I am really excited. It's cool to know how different friends and mentorship relationships kind of start, you know, how it all begins. And so we were writing questions actually of like, how, you know, do we kind of want to flow? And that was the first thing that I'm like, well, I want to know the love story. I want to know how did you meet? You know, what sparks the thing that was like, this is a really good friend. And then it deepens, you know, where you're like, this is a teacher and this is someone I can lean on and so I am definitely interested in hearing kind of more of how your connection has grown and deepened and what that feels like really for both of you because I know we're talking a lot about like how it feels to us to be mentored by older wiser you know kind of know things and have experienced things more teachers but it's also to nice to know from your perspective you know what it feels like to kind of mentor that yogi thing happening. Yeah. Um, well, I can start with the, how we met. Um, Emily Stooks is a mutual friend of ours. And uh, Kelly, you know Emily. She teaches at the studio that we started at and uh, is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. And I just, I love her so deeply. And she is, you know, one of my soul sisters. And um, she brings so much love and light to my life every day. And she, I, we were already kind of building on our friendship and mentorship and just our relationships in many ways. And at the time, Laureen was working on a project for yoga teachers specifically to help them and, and mentor them and such. And, um, but kind of building a whole company and project out of that. And Emily was the one that said, you know what I think you have things that Laureen is looking for and vice versa so I'm gonna put you two in contact and that's where we started what do you think Laureen what was your side of that definitely right on Sharice um I kind of in a nutshell mutual friend mutual need and it really you know that really flows into kind of my whole perspective on mentoring and what that relationship is really about but um when I was um, starting the Yoga Teacher Empowerment Program with our other lovely, dear friend, Veda Spidal, who's an awesome yogi here in the Phoenix area. Um, 
we came to the place where we just, we needed more support. We needed that creative support that Sharice could bring. And, um, and Emily was like, Hey, <laughs> here, I have this wonderful person that is exactly what you're looking for. And I really think that, you know, she would love your program. She's really looking for some mentoring right now. And so it was just a perfect, um, perfect meeting. Perfect fit. Yeah, that's really cool. And we didn't really say in the beginning that we are kind of all over, you know, different places and that you are in Phoenix still. Sharice, you have since moved. You're in Washington. And what does that feel like? Kind of, not only just we're, we're in quarantine, so we're all doing this strange Zoom, you know, or whatever kind of meet, but what is that like to cultivate the relationship now that you're not in the same city? That's a really good question that I didn't even think of, but um, Lorraine and I actually naturally took a little break and it wasn't you know her or I that needed like space or anything like that it was just life you know life happens and it the, the moment came where we both were kind of like you know what now is a good time to pause and we're still friends we're still mentor relationship but we need to kind of step back from what we were doing and so we took a little break and I focused on some things and Laureen focused on some things and then um just more recently in the last, I don't know, Lorraine, was it the last month or two, three months that I reached back out to her and just said, hey, like I have new questions. And uh, if you're available to reconnect, I would love to. And, and she was there. Yeah, totally. And this brings up a really good point. Um, and Kelly, I'm not going to ignore your question. I want to come back to the um, about connecting virtually. But it really does define the mentoring relationship when you have something that's that's special and solid and that's working um which is that it's it's really part of the cycle of life and it's not just like oh this is my mentor and this mentor knows stuff that i don't know and she's going to teach it to me or he's going to teach it to me yeah. it's really more about um you know supporting the person in life and in becoming i mean the yogis t taught us and in Ayurveda the foundations are all about becoming the best version of ourselves that we can be and becoming who we came here to be. You know, it's not even a version. It's like who we really are. It's, it's, it's in us. It is us. And things happen in life often early on, you know, from the beginning when we're little dependent beings that kind of get in the way of us shining. And um, so it's really helpful and I think necessary for everybody to have somebody who we might call a mentor who can see us at who we really are, can see that light, can see that beauty, can see our gifts, even when we can't. And also someone though that can hold the space and invite the person to move through their journey and move through their process. And again, not just like, hey, here's what I think is, you know, your problem or whatever, you know, it's just not about that. It's really about seeing where a person is in their journey and being able to have a, a safe space, a platform where there's trust and mutual respect, where that person feels safe going into their subconscious, sometimes scary, often painful places. And we all have them and they just block our light and they're there for a reason, but the reason isn't to stuff them and hold them down as hard as we can. Because when we do that, you can't just selectively stuff. You know, if you're stuffing that stuff, you're stuffing your brilliance, you're stuffing your joy and you're stuffing everything. So if we can gently bring, bring it to the fore, work through it, learn from it or you know push off of it you know whatever that is for each individual then we go on to the next place in our life where we then have a question and that joins us back up with Sharice's story and she's like I have I have another question I'm gonna call Lorraine and this is to me just the mentor relationship in a nutshell and years can go by or you might have a period in your life where you want to talk to your mentor every week or sometimes every day, depending on what you're going through. And every mentor has should have a mentor. Yeah. So we, you know, so like <laughs> we all student, need to do the this teacher. Yeah. 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 So um in terms of doing this remotely, um 
I have had the benefits and um, teachings of, you know, through the energy work, through um, developing intuition, things like that, where sometimes it's even better to work remotely. And I've had the experience as a client of that, where at first I was like, no, I want to see you in person for you to do your energy work on me because that was so awesome. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm moving. So um, anyway, I prefer it this way because then there's some physical things that get out of the way, then I can tune in more clearly to the more subtle aspects the energy body, the mental body, the emotional body. And so it's really, you know, hopefully your mentor is able to take a holistic approach where, you know, looking for insight into all those things and seeing how they work with each other. So working remotely is perfectly fine. We all are connected to each other in the universal, you know, unified field of consciousness. So um, this is just, you know, it is great to have the video. I'm so appreciating this technology, challenging as it may be at moments of time, but um, it is really great to have that visual recognition, to have the feeling of being with our friend. And, um, but what I've learned, especially in the last couple of months is that everything is great through video. I'm doing all of my, all of my Vedic counseling and all of my yogi stuff um, now um, through video and no problem at all. So, hey, yeah, to me, we're all connected at the heart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That to me is really um, inspiring for, for multiple reasons, but I had a lot of constriction when this first started happening. Oh, Sissy's watching, some friends are watching. So hello, thank you for coming on. Um, but I had some constriction around teaching online and doing these Zoom things. And even Sharice and I have talked before about creating the YouTube content. It was something that I really did want to do and also was very fearful and only since kind of being forced into it have I really started to expand and explore. So it feels good to hear, you know, this is working and this is a connection that you can find. and. It has been really cool to reconnect with friends that do live in different places because now we have the time and we are realizing, whoa, we have the technology and I, I didn't always know that or we didn't know how to use it. So that feels really inspiring that you can still create. We're just having to adjust, you know, some of what our ideas about connection are. Yeah, so along that line, Kelly, I just also want to add in terms of the mentoring relationship is that, you know, the key word that you just said is connection. And when you have a mentor and you get into that rhythm where, you know, it allows for learning to be interwoven into your life, you know, you, you meet with your mentor, you go, you do, you get a question, you come back. And that's how people learn. We learn when we have a question. We don't learn when everyone's like, here's all the information, like, ah, right? Like, oh, I can't handle it. It's too much. So at least for me and for, um, you know, some people with more Vata tendencies, especially, it is really great to be able to say, I have a question and I know who can help me get to the answer. Um, and so in that we may develop just this kind of a connection that's always present. We always feel connected to our mentor. We're doing something, you know, I know with my mentor and I will be like, oh, I know what she would say, you know, cause I'll be like, Oh, how do I handle this? What should I do? It's like, wait a second. And I'll think back to a session. I'll think back to a question I had before or whatever it is, just in terms of the development of that relationship and knowing her and learning how she perceives me and being able to see myself through her eyes when I can't see myself clearly. And then I can say, Oh, you know, and then she's, we're connected. We're always connected. So. Yeah, that feels, um, I really like that too, that it, it, what, this connection that kind of grows and grows where you were just saying, I can know what you would have told me to do. I can know what my mentor would guide me to do once you get into that field that you really, you know, you kind of heart stream together that you, your family, you become this family where it's just like, I know what my older sister would say, or I know what my best friend would say. Then you're also like, I know what my mentor would advise, you know, in certain things. And if you don't know, you always know that's my family I can call I can lean on them call oh, well, yeah. I want to expand and yeah that made me want to think about too um 
So you said original. No, I'm like, wait. Originally, you were doing a program together that you were both kind of working on, and now you know you said you're in different places. What are you? What is your primary yogi thing happening? You mentor a lot of yogis, or you're doing some Ayurvedic things. I'm really more curious, and I know a lot of my friends watching really don't know you, and so I'd love to know what are what's what's day to day. Yeah. So. Um... One of the things I really love to do the most in the whole wide world is mentor yoga teachers. Yeah. Um, yoga teachers are the foundation of the recovery of our planet, <laughs> in my opinion. So, um, you know, and it's just, it's not about, again, you know, courses are wonderful, programs are wonderful, but it's really, you know, that personalized learning. And why we created Yoga Teacher Empowerment Program was most yoga teachers who I had known up until that time want to go deeper, want to learn more, want to understand a more holistic perspective. Like, okay, I've got the poses, everyone's doing them, it's great, but I want more connection. I want to bring more to my people. Um, that was the reason that drove, you know, drove me. It, it was, it was like this drive that I, I uh, created my first retreat when I did before retreats were popular. Um, it was part of my upbringing. I thought I really need to, I want to do a retreat because everyone comes to class. They want to get their poses on. They want to do their yoga and feel good and get stretched out. But I wanted to teach so much more because there is so much more because yoga is really, again, about becoming who we are here to become. So, um, so that's that. And I, um, have gone, you know, really deeply into mentoring with yoga teachers. I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. Yes. We can talk about yoga poses. Yes. We can talk about life. We can talk about how you're feeling. We can do Ayurvedic interventions. Um, it's everything. Um, I would say if there's one word to characterize what I do, it's holistic. Um, I have been an Ayurvedic health practitioner for about 10 years. And one of the things that happened through my practice and seeing people for kind of physical ailments, um, which is how it started. And, you know, 10 years ago, not very many people knew that word Ayurveda. So, you know, they'd hear about it or get referred. And then watching, what is Ayurveda? Yes. Ayurveda, thank you, is a um, Sanskrit word that means the science of life and longevity. It is the sister science of yoga. And it is, you could think of it as just kind of the health and wellness piece that yoga is part of. So yoga is one subset in my, through my lens, that yoga is, is one giant subset of all the modalities that I can use in Ayurvedic healing. So as an Ayurvedic healer, I'm helping people with symptoms, physical stuff, you know, like digestive issues or, you know, I've got this rash or um, I don't know, you know, I, whatever, <laughs> lots of, <laughs> you can imagine. But, um, so what I learned over the first, um, you know, several years of my practice was that, you know, we'd be exploring and, and one of the main roles of the Ayurvedic health practitioners to partner with their client to try to uncover the root cause of the problem. So yes, we can give some herbs or we can give some, you know, avoid this food or whatever to soothe the symptoms. But if you don't get to the root problem, it's, you know, your symptoms are just going to keep coming back. Um, so in terms of getting to the root of the problem, what I kept finding over and over again was that 85, 90% of my clients had the root of the problem in the mental, emotional body. The subtle layers. The subtle layers. And so it only, you know, really served, you know, at first I thought, oh, I'm just kind of doing what I want because I've always been really um, geared toward psychology, you know, took a lot of psychology courses and just very interested in that part of our humanity. But through Ayurveda, um, now delving deeply into Ayurvedic psychology has been just helped me get to the root of where most people's issues are today. And even though, you know, they manifest physically, that's just our intelligent bodies trying to get our attention and say, Hey, we need to make some changes. Something's yeah. not working. And that always goes. So the foundations of Ayurveda is diet and lifestyle. Those are the first things we look at. Those are the first things we aim to correct. So if you are interested in exploring Ayurveda, 
just know that one of the foundational pieces is that you'll probably have to make some changes. <laughs> if there's something that's not working, probably gonna have to make some changes. So if you're not ready for that, you know, maybe go to the doctor or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, right, you know. maybe ask someone else. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so in terms of the totality of my practice, I still do private yoga therapy, one-on-one -on -one yoga um, lessons. Also, uh, you know, for anything that we can address, as all of you yogis know, you know, for different uh, physical rehabilitation, I, just, I am just rehabilitating my wrists that I broke two months ago. And oh. yoga has been such a wonderful, you know, the asana has been such a wonderful way for me to really move that forward. The physical therapists want to know what I'm doing and I'm like yoga. So, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm still doing Ayurvedic health consultations, but my practice is leaning heavily towards basically like mentoring people in life, you know, using the tools of yoga and Ayurveda on and off the mat to evolve into who we came here to be. And really to be able to help people figure out what, what is it in your life that's blocked or what is it that's not letting you find your light or get to what you want to do or, you know, help you develop a habit or change a behavior or, you know, and yes, it can involve herbs. It can involve lifestyle changes, which is kind of like a lot of, you know, routine, establishing like a morning routine, um, sleeping routines, eating cycles, things like that you know, what you eat, all of that, those things that are part of Ayurveda that are so beautiful, such a gift to us, but also working deeper into the energy body, the mental body and the emotional and also the spiritual bodies. So it's really working with the five koshas, the, the whole being. And, um, you know, it's everybody comes for a different reason, but I apply the foundations of yoga and Ayurveda to help people their process. Yes, yes, that sounds, and I feel like this is a good time to say, because there are some friends that are watching and people will, you know, log on a little bit after sometimes too. All of the information for Lorene will be in our post as well. So if you're tuning on and you're like, oh, I am interested, I do maybe need something more or different, you know that you can reach out to me, you know you can reach out to Sharice, but there will be your email address and your Facebook info and all of the good stuff will be in the post. So if you're watching and you're like, wait, wait, who is this? How do I do this? Don't, don't worry about it. You can always connect with Lorene so that you can, you know, even a lot of friends are new to yoga or haven't done maybe any yoga. Maybe they're not sure at all, but that is no reason I think to not reach out to yeah. a you're a beginner and you don't know what's next. Even more reason to say, okay, friend, you know, help me, I'm new and I'm, it's very clear, I, I don't know what to do next. And sometimes that's the best place to meet a mentor is when you just know that you don't know. Well, that's what I love about what you, what you guys are doing with this, you know, yogis off the mat, because really the whole purpose of yoga is to help us understand how to be in life. And um, so this is just a beautiful, and, and oftentimes, like you're saying, if there's people listening and watching who maybe haven't done yoga before, um, you know, it, it can go both ways. We can start doing life things that lead us to get more curious about yoga and vice versa. We can be doing yoga and be like, hey, I want to go deeper and learn more about Ayurveda or something like that. Yeah. I think that that kind of speaks to the note that we talked about last week and this week. But, uh, you know, Lorene and I, our relationship was pretty straight down to business from day one. <laughs> and we kind of both were like, we know what we need. We're answering the needs. Okay, here's how we do it, you know, um, versus Kelly and Kelly's story was more like uh, free flowing and it just kind of organically happened and stuff. But I think both have value and both are beautiful. And I just love pointing that out because um, to me, it just speaks to others that it can happen in any way, shape or form and that anyone can be your mentor just because Laureen specializes in this and it's like her calling in life that doesn't mean that i don't have other mentors or people even that i call mentors and vice versa for other people um so i would love to just encourage people to keep their eyes and ears open to who is in their life that speaks to them that they feel connected to who brings value and insight and love and light to their life because i think those are people that are your mentors and can bring something 
to you because like I said, I have multiple people learning. It's like, oh, well, learning's the best person that ha- I know will have the information I'm looking for in this way. But then I have, you know, Emily and I have all these other people that it's like, well, I feel like this question or moment calls for this person. So I would love to just encourage other people to keep an open mind when they're thinking about their own lives, their own relationships, and just analyzing their relationships and what they can bring. I love that. It's it's funny how we don't really plan anything. You know, we have just a conversation. Sometimes there's questions, but we just, you know, kind of go after whatever comes up, comes up. And it always seems to circle back in that really what you said in the very beginning, Lorraine, connection, connection. Who is giving you some connection? And it can be this person and it can be this person. And then sometimes it's just a reminder of a person. You were saying, you know, sometimes you can hear your mentor when she's not even with you. That's just a reminder of that and that makes you feel deeply connected. And so that's a cool thing too, that, you know, you don't have to do yoga or no yoga or any of that to find connection with someone who you think is gonna nourish something and you will probably nourish something back for them. It's almost always Absolutely. this mutual feeling, even if you don't know it, you know, I feel like, yes, with my mentor, I, she offered so much, but for me, but when we got on the call, she was like, but you offered so much for me, you know, yeah. it's this mutual deal. Yeah, it's definitely a synergistic relationship. Yeah, and that actually was a question I had for you, Lorraine. I wanted to ask you, um, what are the types of benefits that you get when you mentor people? Um, what are the, the benefits of it for you? Wow, that's a very exciting question. <laughs> um, I think a lot of it just has to do with my life purpose. Why I'm here is to help other people. And so I get a great feeling when I can do that and um, support somebody on their journey. And also I have to just admit that I thrive on connection. And, um, you know, part of that again, just my temperament and um, it's just, it's just a part of me that I just, I love people (laughs) and I just want to, I want to hang out with people and I want to hear people's stories and I want to, you know, and then there's that little helping piece where it's like, Hey, let me reflect this. And, you know, we can, we can solve that puzzle together. Um, But definitely it is a cycle. It's part of the cycle of life that we're all collaborating and that we're all mentors and mentees and that these are vital archetypal roles, you know, roles and relationships is that, Teachers, guides, coaches, mentors help us, you know, help us to evolve and we need each other. And, you know, courses are great. Courses are lovely and and super wonderful. It's just, you know, taking that next deeper piece, you know, when you're ready to really dig a little deeper, I think. But, um, you know, collaborating in any form leads to creation. So, you know, I wouldn't say it's a provider consumer thing. It's it is a collaboration. It's a it's you know, happens via dynamic conversation and interchange. So. Wonderful. I'll answer the question question. or see if there's anything we missed. Um, I I, like, I feel like we have time for one more. I always want one more. (laughs) I I have something that I do want to add from what um, Kelly was saying a little bit earlier about um, finding a mentor and how Sharice was saying, you know, just, you know, look around, look at people in your life. who, Who are you attracted to? Who do you respect? Things like that. Um, you can also ask people, you know, if they have someone they work with that's really helped them. Almost like, you know, you might ask someone, hey, do you have a good therapist, right? Because all in all, you know, what I'm doing is holistic therapy. Um, and it may or may not involve yoga. I have clients that we never do yoga poses. So, um, <laughs> but in terms of, you know, looking at that relationship, um, there's a word that I came up with that's a, a new word for me. I didn't I didn't make it up. Um, it's uh, syntonic. And... Um, Syntonic means that there's a high degree of emotional responsiveness to the environment. And so you want to look for that in a mentor. You want that person to be able to have a high degree of emotional responsiveness to you in your environment. And um, but, you know, also to be able to to keep it professional and, you know, to play that role, to not make it about themselves. Um, There's a couple of other characteristics that I'll mention that just came to mind when I was kind of thinking about, you know, what what really does define that relationship? Um, And I think that another thing to look for is someone who places the source of control with the mentee. 
Yeah. So, yes. you know, you really want, you really are running the show. And if your mentor is trying to kind of, you know, has their own agenda, maybe not a good fit. <laughs> so good the point. source of control should be with the mentee. You want to hand that control over. Um, you know, that you should hear questions like, you know, what can I do for you? What do you want to do today? How can I help you? Where are you at? Stuff like that. Um, in terms of uh, vulnerability, you know, being able to look for a mentor who's willing to be authentic, who's okay with letting things maybe get messy, and who can, who can be com comfortable with you in all of your messiness. Because that's what we really need, is we need to get in there, and we need... You know, we, we can't do it alone. I, I do not believe we can do this work alone, that we, we have to do it, but we need help and we need support and we definitely need to be witnessed in order to be validated in having done our work, you know, having moved through, having been in a real place that was important for us to be in, even if it was painful. So that level of vulnerability um, is, I think, very important. Um, engagement, we've talked about a lot in terms of the conversation, the collaboration. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's, again, just the mentor needs um, to be there to support the process of the mentee's growth at the time when the need comes up. So, It does remind me a lot of um, my relationships that I've had with therapists, you know, and so it is really nice. And for me, in my experience, it's been um, different points in my life where I needed different things, like you're saying, you know, what what's supportive in that moment, right? And uh, there's times where I needed to work through all that emotional stuff on the like psychological level. And then um, coming back full circle, the things that we mentioned prior in the conversation was what brought me to you wasn't me seeking therapy, but do we do things that are very actual therapeutic things now absolutely yeah. and i do think now i kind of see in this moment you turn out to be my therapist a lot of times and how many times have we been on a call and i start crying and telling you something and i'm like i don't even know why i'm talking about this and i'm so yeah i have moments of being embarrassed that i'm crying and embarrassed that i'm talking about something from my childhood but then we both just honor the process and say well this is where we need to be right now and it kind of on my side the vulnerable vulnerable side, it sucks because I don't want to deal with it, but I do feel so grateful that learning is holding the space for me. And I, I will say that you have reflected back to me things like my, my therapist of like moments where I've said, oh, you planted the seed and it grew into this. And I'm so grateful for you for that knowledge. And you and my therapist and my other mentors have always been so uh, humble and, and gracious to say, I didn't do it. You, you do it, you know, you did the work. I, I was here, I was supporting you, but you did the work, you know? And so I do think that that Absolutely. is such a important piece that you mentioned. And I am grateful to you and to everyone who has supported me in my life. Um, not to make it all about me, of course, but <laughs> we all <laughs> I want to hear more about you. you know? <laughs> I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll take that moment to really, you know, say how great Lorena is. <laughs> We want to know too what friends are also feeling and thinking. So definitely, you know, yeah. comment about what you're feeling and how, you know, what does that sound like to you to be vulnerable with someone that you feel like is so great? I mean, for me to get to be the third party, I think you were mentioning last week when you were the person, Sharice, that was in this shoes, how fun it is to see someone really connected with a friend, with a mentor, with, you know, and so as the, as the backseat, it's really cool to see a real relationship you know you can be mushy you can be messy you can be the real self comes out and so maybe other friends want to share even later too after they think about it how does that sound does that feel like it might be good does that feel like it might be scary how does that feel to get get vulnerable and, and grow yeah. with another human or with many you know with many humans we're all doing it. yeah yeah and i just want to pluck one little piece out that resonated with what sharice was saying about you know we, she's done a lot of work with um, the psychology of stuff, you know, and I'm only, it only sparked me because it's, we share this in common and I've noticed this with, you know, 
you know, therapists, um, psychologists and things who are wonderful, helpful people. But um, because of the way the subconscious works and because of the way our systems are built, it, it, some people have a very strong bypass. And so we can work through everything perfectly mentally and be like, hey, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I graduate, you know, and the person is like, you know, good job. Go, go do life. <laughs> But um, that was actually how I got connected with the energy worker that I referred to earlier that we, we you know, who likes to connect virtually um, was my therapist was like, you, you've got this mentally, you know, and I'm like, but I'm still, you know, I'm still upset. I still don't know how to deal. And she just, she referred me for a deeper, a deeper experience. And what I find often with my clients is we think if we have it mentally that we also have, also have it emotionally. But the reason, another reason why yoga is so useful with all of this is because those things that we, that are difficult, as Sharice is saying, it's, I don't want to go there. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it's difficult. It's painful. It's embarrassing. It's whatever it is, but, um, it's there. It wants our attention. It's there for a really good reason. And it's there for us. And, you know, to have a way and have a, a relationship that can help you, even if you've got it mentally, who can help you have the courage and the desire to go deeper. I think that is a real sparkling gift. Yeah, yeah because what you're, I, what I hear you're saying is psychology is very mental, but then those subtle bodies, it's like, what are we doing with them? And how do we yeah. access them? And it's just this huge unknown scary process on its own so for me personally i can definitely say that having a mentor that understands those subtle bodies and can help me work my way through them is huge and, and sometimes that's one of those things where you don't know you need it until you're standing on the doorstep and you're kind of like i guess i'm gonna knock let's go in let's see what happens <laughs> yes yes that is always that way for me. I'm always so surprised, you know. I'm always like, how did I end up here? But, you know, I'm never like, oh, yeah, I was so ready. I packed a bag. I have my water. <laughs> I'm always just like, what is going on? So I think really that, that is really what we're telling everybody is that we don't, we don't know what you know or don't know. And we don't care because we don't know either. But when we're doing it all together, you know, it works. <laughs> and when you have friends that are moving along the way, then it's helped it's good we don't have to be by ourselves we're not and like Lorene said we're not supposed to be by ourselves we're not you know you need help so I love that we do usually ask that our guest um closes for us if that doesn't put you on if they have something for us well I actually have a couple of things so um I'll have to choose one I guess um I'll choose the experiential so let's just do um, maybe about a one or two minute um, breath, breath work experience. So um, however you are now, just take a moment to shift and uh, feel yourself in your body, finding a comfortable seat and hopefully as much as you can, you know, feeling a presence in the body. And for most of us seated, we want an upright lifted spine. It's fine also if you want to lie down for this. So as your attention starts to come inward, your energy draws inward and naturally we're brought to the breath. So just deepen your breath. Let yourself be in touch with that process of breathing in and out. Let your attention now come down to the base of your body. And whatever position you're in, just let your attention come to the root, the tailbone, the base of your pelvis, the side of the base of your body. And so this is the place where some of those old experiences may have left some debris. And we can do a little root chakra cleansing with our breath, imagining a little sphere in your pelvis. 
And if you like the visual, you can use a color red. I'm picturing that red orb within you. We're going to use the breath to make that orb spin evenly. And so we even out the inhale and the exhale in terms of duration so that the length of the inhale matches approximately with the length of the exhale. And it's the push-pull of the breath that gives that gentle movement to the spinning orb. And maybe you can visual it becoming more well-rounded more stable. Instead of a wobbly spinning orb, maybe your orb with breath becomes more fluid. It maintains its circular appearance. Maybe it grows a little larger. And it gives a sense of stability, be a slight motion of sweeping with some kind of a cleansing action happening for you. Maybe kind of just letting it come up however you see it or feel it. Just being with that for a moment. Feeling how you can directly affect the subtle body, your energy body, in this case the Muladhara Chakra. And then just creating a nice intention when you've got your orb all polished up and nicely spinning happily with ease, yet strong, firm, able to support you in your physical world. You can gently let yourself rise back up, maybe following the line of the spine as you follow the breath up. Inhaling all the way up tall through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, feel free to open the mouth. Release maybe some debris that may have been cleaned up in that process. When you feel ready, gently letting the eyes flicker open if you have them closed. And coming back to join this beautiful Thursday in progress. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. I don't want to come back. <laughs> well, the beauty is you can go there anytime you want. Now it's in your toolbox. Yes. yes. And something that um, all this made me think of that I forgot to mention earlier is Lorraine is offering a pranayama workshop, correct? Is that what you're calling it? Yes. Okay. And when yes. is that? So the Pranayama workshop is starting in May. It'll be on the first Sunday of the month. And it will go through 2020. It's uh, eight classes. So it's um, essentially we'll be covering the nine phase pranayama from Dr. Vasant Lad, who is the founder and brilliance behind the Ayurvedic Institute in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this is something that is a very well rounded, tridoshic, physically balancing, mentally, emotionally, holistic pranayama sequence and series that is a very beautiful thing and um, it's so healing on so many levels and I just it's been a while since I've taught it and I just feel called to offer it now because there's so much going on and always the answer is to turn back to ourselves and pranayama is the best way to balance our energies our physiology and you know just like the quickest most accessible holistic tool that we have in our toolbox and so it'll be the first watching that is not in Ayurvedic or yoga worlds. Pranayama is our breath work. So uh, it is a, a healing breath workshop that, uh, again, like Lauren said, is so accessible to all whoever is feeling called to check that out. Yeah, whoever wants to breathe, breathe more. We want to breathe, <laughs> breathe more. And everybody is welcome. We breathe more. So we will, and I know I said before, but we just always want for friends who are coming off and on that all of Lorene's information will be in my post. And as we start sharing, it'll be in Charisse's post and post and post. 
So if you feel like I missed something and I want to connect, please just message any one of us or connect with the post to make sure that we can definitely sign you up, get you in the workshop, and that you can connect because the, the breath stuff, this is like such a, a nice, deeper piece that you don't really need any training to begin. You just have to, you know, sign on and be like, yes, I'm going to check it out. So definitely, if you want to know anything about it, we can get you connected so you can sign up to do that. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, I think we're doing it. Well, we love you guys very much. We'll be back next week, and we're really happy to have Lorene Hayden, and I'm very grateful, too, for your closing. So anybody who wants to just do the little meditation, come back, you know, and do the little meditation. It's so great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thanks, Kelly. Thank Thanks, Therese. Yeah, see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Alrighty, we are done streaming and we are also done recording. So we're back to just us now. Awesome. Awesome.